from k &R Railroad. I'm going to show you how to turn a plastic frog into an electro frog using this method. It's very simple. Now I know a lot of you guys have older railroads that may have switches that have uh, plastic frogs in them. Uh, the reason is because the rails cross there electronically and you have to float the rails at that point. And the problem with that is when a train runs over it, an engine, the wheel spacing may be such that it reduces the number of wheels that have contact with the rail. And now with the new DCC systems, when you creep your train along, it's more likely that it's going to find these dead spots, especially if you're using plastic frogs. But there's no reason to tear out your switches from your layout because you can use this method to convert your frog. Now, what you're going to need to start would be a uh, piece of 30 gauge wire. Uh, it could be 40 gauge. Um, I think that's about as small as you can get, but 30 gauge works fine. Stranded is fine too. Solid will work fine too. We're going to use this to connect to the new electric frog that we make so that you can energize it. Another thing you're going to need, which is the most critical part, would be the foil. The foil tape that we're going to use to lay over the frog. Now, this is simply window burglar alarm foil. It comes in different materials. You can get it in aluminum, which I don't recommend because aluminum is hard to, harder to work with. You can't solder to it as easily. Um, you can get it in copper. Copper works well. Uh, however, it's a little darker color and that may work better for your railroad if you're looking for a darker color frog. You can't lighten it. And this, which is uh, lead, lead-based uh, uh, window foil. You know, I can get sheets of nickel silver foil, but I just can't get it with the sticky backing. This stuff comes with a, a sticky backing that allows it to stick to the frog so that you don't have to use any glues when you're putting this down. Um, it, it, it runs at different prices. You can go online, you can get it, uh, Google it, and you can find it at your alarm store. Burglar alarm store uh, may have some of it. Another thing you're going to need is a um, uh, way of working with the uh, foil. Uh, what I suggest is a putty knife that has a very blunt end to it and rounded corners, so it's not sharp. Nothing is sharp here. If, if it's sharp, it'll tear the foil. The foil is very, very fragile. It's like wet toilet tissue and trying to work with it. It's pretty tough to work with and you have to develop a little bit of skill, but it's not that hard to do. And you'll see when I show you how this is done. Um, get one that's about an inch long, a little bit longer than the frogs that you're going to do. And the reason for that is because we're going to push the foil down between the wing rail and the point of the frog. And it shouldn't fit snug, it should fit just slightly loose so that when you put it in there, uh, you can work it back and forth and, and around and, and about so that you can get the foil to stick to the sides of the rails um, and then over the top. Uh, don't use a screwdriver like this. The, the, it's too sharp, too small. It's not going to work for you. Uh, you're not going to be happy with this. Uh, you're going to tear the foil if you use something small like this. Another thing you're going to need is a razor blade, uh, some way of cutting the foil, which is simple and obvious enough. And another thing you're going to need is a voltmeter. Uh, any kind of voltmeter will work or continuity checker of any kind. You can use a bulb and battery will work fine. The reason for that is we want to make sure that when we make the plastic frog an electro frog that it will have continuity to the wire that we're going to put down through the table so that you can connect it to your frog juicer or we can make sure that it doesn't connect or short out any of the rails that is completely floated from the rails. And uh, so you want to get, uh, you know, some kind of continuity checker just to double check. If you're that good, you don't need it. You pretty much so can, you can see whether or not it's, it's, it's well done or not just by looking at it when you get done with it. Uh, I do have a, a little setup here. Um, oh, don't forget the solder iron too. That's pretty standard that we're going to use later on. Uh, I have a little setup here, uh, a little test 
setup where I run trains back and forth just to see how they work. And um, I've got one frog that I've completed here. And I've got one frog that I will do for you to show you how simple and easy it is. What I did was I cut a piece of the foil off of the tape. Uh, you know, no more than this. This is all you need. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up here to where the, the plastic, you can see here where the plastic meets the rails, where the two rails come together. And I'm going to start with the tape there, angle it so that it's even over here at this end, then come back here, take a look at where I need to trim this side, oops, back, okay, I think it's right about in here somewhere. Okay, didn't do a good job on that side, but we can always trim it more. Okay, I think we've got a pretty good start here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one side down, and then I'm going to take the putty knife and I'm going to work this into uh, the space between the switch point and the wing rail on the frog. Okay, now that I have that there and what I think is pretty secure, then what I will do is hold down this side. All right, so moving it down, moving it down. And now I'm going to work the foil, this, this part of the foil here, into the groove here. See how I'm sliding it in? Now it takes a little practice to get this. I haven't done that many, so. Okay, and now that I have everything in order, I'm going to press down on this and then continue to make sure that I have this glued in there securely. Now, the reason I'm not taking this little area down here, press it all down, make sure it's all pressed smooth. And this stuff is so thin, the wheels won't even know it's, it's there, okay? I'm leaving this little piece up here, and the reason for that is because I'm going to use this to solder to. Tin the end of your wire. Okay? The next thing you're going to do would be to tin the end of your solder gun. You want to make sure you get a lot of solder on the tip. So, um, we'll clean off the tip there by shaking it off. And then what we'll do is we'll get a lot of solder on the tip. And while it's still smoking, that's the time when you want to hit it up here on the foil. And there it is, it's connected. Okay, got a little bit of solder on the top there, but that's okay. All right, so now you know how to change a plastic frog into an electro frog. Of course, this wire you run down underneath your table and to your, you can use frog juicers. I've used frog juicers on some of these just because it's convenient. Before I use the switch, I will run a truck through it several times, kind of skew it off and run it through, skew it off, run it through. So the flanges kind of push up against the sides here to make sure that this piece is stuck in place. Now, to check the continuity of this application would be to take and get an ohm meter and start checking. One, you want to make sure that you don't have a short to this rail. And there, see it goes up, short to that rail. And you do not have a short to this rail. Mm 
okay? And then the connection that we just made, I can see the thing here, let's connect it up to there and see if we got continuity to the frog. Yeah, see, anywhere I touch on the frog, we have continuity. That means as the pickup wheels roll through the frog, they will connect. The dead spot has been eliminated. Just make sure the electronic frog is switched to the side of the switch points. Now, there are plastic joints at crossovers as well. However, it depends on how they're being used. Usually you have two common corner rails that could be bridged as shown where the foil is connected to the rail and two shown unfinished that could be powered with a soldered wire to a juicer. Thanks for sticking it out to the end. I hope this improves the performance of your model railroad. And if you like what I did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like what I did, go easy on me. This is the first time I put one of these together. Hopefully there'll be more. Uh, some of the ideas that I have, I think are kind of unique, will be helpful. And I'd like to put more of these together. So constructive input is always welcome. And if you would like to receive some uh, foil, and some wire to give it a try to see how it works for you, let me know at this email address here. And I'll be more than happy to uh, send you some foil. It's uh, enough to do four frogs for $2. Uh, so I appreciate it. Thank you very much.